so hard coming up with a new idea for the the program. I I just don't know. I just don't know. What am I gonna do this time? Oh! Didn't see you there. Well, welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias. Glad to see you. Wasn't really expecting you. Uh, better put this away before I cut myself. Well, get ready for another exciting show, I hope. Uh, and if you enjoy what you're seeing, don't forget to leave a comment and uh, make sure you uh, like subscribe and <coughs> ring that notification bell. And don't forget to tell your friends. They all want to know about it. Come to Knife Chats with Tobias. It'll be a great one. Thanks for being here. Talk to you soon. Don't forget the thumbs up. Get ready for a big one. Before we go to the main event, I thought I would show you my latest classic SD. And this one is from the Swiss Knife Shop and it is called Arcade Invaders from Space. And uh, obviously it's a limited edition and I like the way the boxes are done with these things. In any case, here we have it. And uh, I guess uh, anyone who ever played Space Invaders kind of knows what this one is all about. I picked it up because I figured it would just be a nice little addition to my uh, uh, space-themed classic SDs. And you see all the little invaders up there. And then on the back side, you have all of the invaders shown there. I don't know if these are the exact ones that were in the game Space Invaders or not, but uh, it's a throwback to uh, Space Invaders. And, uh, well, just thought I'd share it with you real quick. Uh, before we move on to the next thing and uh, so there you have it And on to the main event, which is the Victorinox Winemaster. Um, for those not familiar with you, this is a 130 millimeter knife in the Victorinox lineup. Um, the 130 millimeter knives were originally made uh, by Wenger. Uh, and then, uh, well, Wenger was bought by uh, Victorinox and they continued to uh, go under the Wenger name uh, until recently. And then... Uh, they became Victorinox Delamont. And um, interesting enough, this is the first knife made by Victorinox Delamont, uh, the wine master. This knife was never in the Wenger lineup, uh, which was one of the reasons I wanted to grab this one. But there were three other reasons I decided to pick this knife up. Let's get it out of the box and see something a little better. Um, Comes in a nice little leather slip. I'll talk about that a little bit too. Uh, but this is the uh, the knife, uh, the Wine Master. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, so it's 130 millimeters long. Um, and the reason I picked it up is because I did not have any Victorinox 130 millimeter knives. And I was wanting to have at least one knife in every size in the Victorinox lineup, so uh, what better knife to get than uh, the first uh, 130 millimeter knife that was made by Victorinox. Yes, the lineup began in Banger lineups, but this was the first uh, 130 millimeter knife by Victorinox, exclusively by Victorinox. Uh, that was one of the big selling points for it. The second one is it's in olive wood, um, and I like to collect knives in olive wood so that was another one and third it is a bartender or waiter's tool uh, and that is a third thing that I like to collect and specifically this one is a uh, a, a picnic knife actually it's uh, it's a knife designed to open wine bottles when you're outdoors and also it's there for food preparation and such uh, and uh, there's a little bit of interesting uh, 
uh, information about the development of this knife. So, um, Victorinox actually teamed up with uh, Philippe Schwander, who is uh, Switzerland's only wine master to create this knife. Um, I had no idea who Philippe Schwander was, so I looked him up and uh, found out that basically he's been involved with the uh, wine industry in Switzerland since the age of 16. And uh, he's a world-renowned guy. He knows quite a bit about wine. Um, and um, he is Switzerland's only wine master. I don't know exactly what that means, but it sounds pretty impressive to me. And I tell you what, the knife is also pretty impressive to me. In any case, when uh, Victorinox teamed up with Phil Philippe Schwander, uh, the idea was to create um, the perfect picnic knife. Uh, and so what's a picnic knife? It's basically uh, a knife that you use outdoors. Um, and it should be able to open a bottle of wine uh, or other beverages and it should be good for food prep so and that's uh, what uh, we have here in the wine master uh, before I actually look at the knife I want to go over the uh, slip that uh, comes with it also well, before I even do that uh, it comes with uh, a wine masters user's guide and in the user guide it shows you how to use the uh, two-step uh, uh, corkscrew uh, with all the stuff there. It also shows you how to open and uh, close the main blade and then it gives you a little bit of other details about the knife and shows you both the walnut version and the olive version. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Um, and then the sheath or slip really is really nice. It's a, a very soft leather. It's not extremely thick but it is a quality leather. Uh, you got a little um, tab here, or a little, uh, I don't know what you call it, a little slash going across there that this tucks into. That holds it closed. The knife goes in there quite well. Um, I've been putting it in like this so that the cross is up at the top. I suppose uh, I really should be putting it in like so. Uh, and if I end up adding a, uh, little fob on here to pull the knife out I might end up doing it that way uh, but you can feel the knife inside there and it's going to form to the uh, the knife so eventually uh, you should probably settle on how you want to put the knife in there uh, but in any case very soft very supple um, nothing in there that is going to scratch the knife so which is good because both of these uh, knives either the walnut or, or olive wood uh, well, they have wood handles, and uh, I don't think they have or have decided to do any other kind of handle on it. I like the way it has been dyed. You can see the grain in there and everything. You got Victorinox embossed right there, and then you have Winemaster on the side there. And it's really designed to be dropped in a pocket, or it um, can go into the picnic basket. I'm thinking that's really the idea behind this because it is a, a five inch long knife it's it's definitely a pocket full but one of the thoughts i had is it would be very easy especially for somebody who knew something about uh she's to actually take and uh, just flip that over stitch it into the back here and you would have a nice little belt pouch for it um yeah there's no cover for it but you can do it like that and it goes in deep enough so it's not going to fall out so it'd be very easy to actually take the tongue here and just slip it over stitch it down and have a nice belt sheet um if i pick up i'm looking to see if they have other uh if you can get the sheath separately because if i could do that i would probably try and do that but i don't want to do that to this one because this is the only one i have but in any case it's a really nice uh leather sheath or leather pouch rather uh, my only concern with it is I'm, I'm worried that this could break if you're not careful with it but uh, it is well stitched and goes together quite well and you got a nice little uh, pouch to carry your knife in 
Let's move on to the knife. Uh, I'm going to cover the blade first because that's the easiest thing to cover. A uh, really nice blade. It's a fine edge blade. I love the uh, the way it, uh, you know, the, the the lines on it and everything else. It's a beautiful little drop point. Got a little uh, jumping up here. It is not very aggressive. You can definitely feel it, and you can grab your thumb into there. So if you got to push down hard uh, with thumb or finger, it will. You'll get a good purchase on there. Uh, you see on one side, uh, Swiss made Delamont, and then the other side you have Victorinox right there. Uh, closing the. Oh, and wanted to show you that liner lock. Because that liner lock is as thick as the blade is, if you can see there. And it goes all the way across, but notice it is even with the handle. You can't really, I guess you could try and get in there to close it, but that's not the way it's closed. And the user guide shows you very clearly. And anyone who's familiar with the 130 millimeter lineup knows that uh, the, uh, the shield is your button release for the liner lock so that's pretty cool it is uh, not something that you're going to be able to do this with at least not brand new and at least not me I cannot do it uh, but if you press down you can definitely get it started and close the blade up nice and easy and yes it comes as sharp as you would expect from any Victorinox knife and the lockup is rock solid as you would expect from any Victorinox knife so it's really a, a nice, uh, good blade and a good length of a blade too. So when they're talking about a, a blade for food prep in the outdoors, um, you really can't go wrong. This blade is just shy of four inches long. You notice um, they did not bring the edge all the way back to the end, but if you wanted to do something like that, you could. I don't know why you would want to though. Uh, so you got a little bit of protection there, but really your protection is right there your hand isn't going to slip up on there and you got a, a blade that is definitely going to be really good for cutting up uh, meat or anything else you need to do in the world of food prep uh, vegetables or anything else uh, probably not the best one for the soft uh, softer cheeses but definitely still good to use and then um, you also have on the other side here a little label cutter and uh, not a bad little label cutter you notice it is serrated most label cutters are serrated it is a blunt tip at the end here um, could you use that for other things like cutting rope and stuff like that you probably could uh, could use it for opening up your boxes or anything else like that too so uh, really nice little uh, uh, label cutting blade there or box opener or anything else you want to use it for um, but yeah this is really designed for cutting the the labels or the foil around a bottle of wine or something so you can open the bottle of wine easier all right let's move on to the main attraction on this knife and the reason uh, uh, Philippe Fonder was involved with it probably and that is all of this stuff on the back here Oh, and before I even get started with that, when you got this blade in your hand, all of that just kind of disappears. You do not feel that in your hand at all. It just, uh, I mean, if you're grabbing it like that, yes, you're going to feel it. But in a typical way that you hold the knife, this stuff, uh, it just kind of goes right over it all. This is the only part that's exposed. So you have all of this here, but really... No real hot spots in your hand. And the same thing with the little uh, label cutter down here. Uh, yes, you can feel it, but it is not bad. Uh, and remember, this is not a heavy duty knife. This is a light duty knife. But this blade could probably handle quite a few heavy duty tasks if need be uh, for a short length of time. Uh, so yeah, it's you know not a real problem gripping it at all. And with a handle that is 130 millimeters, that's five and an eighth of an inch is long. Uh, you got that natural grip going in right there. And uh, got the little pommel going back a little bit on that side. It just feels great in the hand. Uh, 
And as soon as I had this in my hand and felt it a little bit, it's like, yeah, you know what? I, I definitely need to uh, uh, reconsider my thoughts on the 130 millimeter knives because they feel really good. Uh, any case, let's move on now to the back side of the knife and talk about all this stuff up here. And anyone who knows anything about waiter's tools probably already knows quite a bit about that. Now the first thing I want to talk about is the cap lifter on this knife uh, because um, when I first saw them showing it, it's like, where's the cap lifter? And then uh, I, I look more closely at it and it's like, oh, well, that's pretty cool. That's a, that's an interesting way to put a cap lifter into a waiter's tool. Um, and it's right here. It's part of the, uh, the two-step lever. Uh, it's the, the end of it here is the cap lifter. That's not usually the way you will find a cap lifter on a two-step lever. Uh, and I was thinking, well, how effective is that going to be? But uh, actually, it's no problem at all because if you notice, even if that is up, when you push into the bottle, it grabs right on there. And obviously, Victorinox knows a thing or two about making cap lifters on bottles because they've been, or cap lifters on knives because they've been doing it for well over a hundred years, and they know how to get the size right. And this thing works perfectly. It, it's just a, a great little cap lifter. The only um, thing I have against this cap lifter is that you have to open up the knife to use it uh, because on most waiter tools, uh, you do not have to open it up to use a, a cap lifter. Um, for instance, here's a, a typical modern waiter's tool and you see right there is the cap lifter uh, and there's your two-step lever. Now you could open it up and use the cap lifter, but most of the time you don't need to. You can just get it right like so and um, get it on there and pop it off. The other way obviously is to get it opened up and do it this way. So you can use it either way. But uh, really, is that a problem? Uh, not really. Um, we'll be showing a little bit more of this compared to this waiter's tool in a second too. The cool thing, though, is that it is a two-step lever. And that was the first thing I was looking at. It's like, well, I see the first step way out here. And then it's like, wow, uh, that's the second step of the lever? And it's like, I guess it'll work. Uh, and when you consider the way this is hinged, this part of it actually hits that lever portion so that it will catch. And actually, this is the first part. This is the second part. Let me show you how this works real quick. So here we have a fancy schmancy wine bottle with a cork in it. And yes, this cork has been pulled more than one time. Um, but for sake of demonstration, let's show you what we need to do. We open up the... Uh, the uh, wine master and we insert the cork or the corkscrew into the cork get it all the way down in there as far as we can get it which is pretty far easy peasy you get your cork in there more correctly you get your corkscrew into your cork and then you pull this up and you rest that on the edge of the bottle, like so. Grab it by your hand and give it a little crank, oops. Get it on the bottle. Give the cork a lift. You get it halfway up. And you move the bottle over and get it better in frame. Move your, uh, your lever down. Okay, didn't get it up enough quite yet. A little more. Place the lever on the other side there. See, now you got it up to the second stage. And give it a, the rest of the pull up. And your cork is out of the bottle. So that's the way the uh, two-step lever works. And this is nothing new, by the way. This, uh, the, uh, the levered corkscrew like this was developed all the way back around 1880 or 1882, something like that. Um, I'm going to be doing a... a uh, a history on these knives uh, uh, on waiter tools or the 
or the waiter's friend, whatever you want to call it, in the near future. So I'll go into more detail on that later. Uh, but in any case, that's the way it works. So as you can see, um, the uh, the the two-step lever and corkscrew is just phenomenal when it comes to removing a cork from a bottle. And um, the fact that you can get that on the back of this knife and it feels nice and comfortable in the hand and you have a, a full-size blade to use uh, for food prep and everything really does kind of make this uh, darn near perfect when it comes to a... Uh, a uh, picnic knife and I've, I've got quite a few other picnic knives um, out there but none of them quite compare to this one um, the probably two of them that are close to it are the well the open L picnic knife which has a uh, corkscrew on the back side here which is also a full-size corkscrew and yes there is a little spring on the inside if you notice there there's a pin there holding it in place but it does have a little bit of a spring action going in there. So there is a like a little slip joint spring in there to keep the uh, corkscrew down when it's down. So it's out of your way. And that also feels comfortable in your hand. And you've got a full size blade on there. But what it lacks uh, is the two step lever. And the two step lever is makes pulling that cork so much easier. Uh, does lock also it's got your typical ring lock on there so uh, the open L is probably the closest and really looks nice but I also have um, this uh, uh, one by uh, uh, Baladeo which also has a locking blade and a full-size blade it does have the lever but it's a single uh, lever it's not a two-step it's a one-step lever but it does have a full step or full size uh, corkscrew. I'm actually going to um, review these two knives, compare them side by side in another video, so I'm not going to go into great detail with it. But your typical um, Liguel style um, picnic knife has a short uh, little pigtail here. This one is even kind of hard to open. Uh, and I notice I said look well style. If this is not a true look well, this is probably out of Pakistan. I'm, I'm guessing that because of the uh, um, uh, Damascus blade on there. But it's a nice little knife. But you see, it has the short corkscrew, which is what you usually see on a picnic knife, um, and also what you see on the cheese knife here by Victorinox in the 111 millimeter lineup. Um, much shorter corkscrew than what you have on this and the fact that uh, you don't yes you can obviously pull a cork with this because I have but um, you can obviously see the difference in size and the lever is really what makes the difference uh, the fact that you have this lever makes it so much easier to pull the cork um, because basically you got a, a combination waiter's tool and a full-size knife so it's pretty cool any case um, stick around for some slides uh, for quite a few slides actually because I'm going to be comparing this to quite a few knives and also a few waiter's tools but um, I tell you I'm really impressed with this knife I'm also impressed with the entire 130 millimeter frame so I will definitely have to uh, pick up a couple more of these um, I already got my eyes set on two different ones. And the cool thing about Wenger knives is they have so many, uh, some of them have some really strange options on them. So one of the ones I'm looking at has got a definitely a strange option on it. So anyway, let's go to the slides before I ramble even more. You know, one last thing I do have to point out is I was being somewhat unfair uh, when I was comparing this knife to any of these knives because of the simple price of this knife. Uh, the price of this knife is at least double anything on uh, the table behind it here. And in some cases, triple or quadruple what you would pay for any of the other items behind there. So um, 
yes, it is a much better tool than any of these, but you are also going to pay for a much better tool compared to these. And that is something that people always should uh, consider when comparing uh, knives, uh, the price that you're paying for them. And uh, I was somewhat remiss in my excitement over this uh, video uh, when I was looking at this knife because I did not take into the price factor when looking at all the other knives behind here. So remember that as well. that wasn't the cat's meow i don't know what else i can do uh hope you enjoyed the show if you did please leave a comment even if you didn't like it leave a comment give me that thumbs up give me that thumbs down looking forward to it and if you really enjoyed the show and want to know what's coming up next go ahead and subscribe and 
ring that notification bell. Kitty says hi. Talk to you again soon.